Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. We are continuing our series of Sunset Over Dublin. So this is what the book looks like, nice and pretty, hot off the presses. And today's lesson will be the Mosaic 21.2. Now I call this a modified kite and you'll see why, but if you're just tuning in right now, you might not know what the kite block looks like. So this is one of the blocks that we've already done and this, is the kite block. It has a large triangle, half square triangles, and then two on the side. So this one had the kite block and the bow tie block. So now we're going to work on the mosaic 21.2, which is what I'm going to call a modified block, a modified kite. So starting with, we're going to do the half square triangles. So if we take our dark background in this case, because for the quilt behind me, I'm using the dark background in the book or other variations on the theme going to put it together with the red or magenta color and in my case I'm just going to draw one line right down the middle because my machine I can move the needle to the right so that from the edge of the foot to the needle is a scant quarter inch. Remember if you don't have that option on your machine then you can first do your center line then you can with your ruler carefully trying to find the scant quarter inch in your ruler which means it's just a needle away from the actual um, scant the quarter inch on your ruler and you might have to draw two additional lines. Now I'm going to show you another technique in, a pre in an upcoming video showing you another technique where you don't have to draw any lines at all. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be giving you lots and lots of options. So whether or not you have to draw one line or two I'm using my Boheen white marking pen, but you could also use a friction pen or a pigment pen. This one happens to be from Stadler. So lots of different options when you're drawing. So let's draw one more and then we'll go and sew these half square triangle units. Right sides together and remember I have already stiffened up this fabric, which makes it just a little bit nicer going through the machine. It makes everything work out a lot easier. All right, so going here, for now, I do have my guidelines for quilting seam guide on my machine just to the right of my foot, but know that for the half square triangles, I don't need that. But it's uh, got a low enough profile that I can just leave it there. I don't have to take it out. So sewing a scant quarter of an inch here, coming to my next one. Same idea. So I'm going to sew on either side of these two lines, and when we come back, I'll show you how I press them and trim them. So those seams are now sewed on either side. I do want you to notice, and the back of this black isn't really, really black, but typically if I'm going to use a black background in a quilt, I'm probably going to piece it with the black thread. I am using like a gray thread with this because sometimes I want you to see the stitches, but it'll be just fine. So keep in mind, whatever your background is, that's oftentimes what you want to use, um, what color thread you want to use. All right. So I've pressed them already, just kind of pressing them flat. Now I'm going to cut it right down the middle. You can do this with your rotary cutter or your scissors, whichever, pretty much I do whatever I have handy at that given moment. And then we're going to press these. Now in the book, it's going to tell you which way to press it. And for this case, it wants me to press them toward the background fabric, which happens to be the darkest fabric of the two. But that's not always going to be the case. There we go. Press that one. And I like to kind of stack them one on another. So offsetting it by that seam, then put the next one. And I don't know, just kind of keeps everything compact. And then I feel like, okay, it's being extra, extra steamed because it's the one underneath and on top. So we have four of these. Give it a little steam with the um, spray sizing already in the fabric. It's gonna help hold it nice and crisp. Now we're going to trim it down. So I'm going to use my Omni Grip. So this is just a four, five inch Omni Grip and it's this diagonal line that is so important. This ruler is kind of cool because it does tell you what size to cut your pieces. If you're doing half square or quarter square triangles, there's these extra little numbers, just little extra bonuses on these Omni Grid rulers. So I'm gonna line it up and I wanna trim this to two and a half inches. So right there being sure that the diagonal line is on the diagonal of your pieced block cut the right and the top then spin the block around to trim this to two and a half inches
there we go. I've got a couple more to trim and then I'll show you what to do next. So my half square triangles are trimmed and now I'm going to make the other part of the kite. So these are the squares. So oftentimes when I'm doing half square triangles, the math tells you you have to cut your square two and seven eighths inches, but I have you cut it three inches and then we just trim them all down to a perfect size. But there are times that I tell you to cut a two and seven eighths inch square for some reason. And this is one of those. So these squares have been cut two and seven eighths. You can't fudge with that and say, I'm going to cut it three inches and just make it work. Nope. Cut them the size. And I specifically mentioned that in the book. And on these ones, four of them, so I have four stacked right here, you're going to cut on the diagonal. The other four you are not going to cut at all. Now you're going to take these and assemble them like this with the half square triangle. So when you're doing this, the trick is to know that this is the bias edge. These are the straight of grain. When the block goes together, this bias edge will be covered. So I'll just take a couple of these to the sewing machine and show you how we piece these. So I have my half square triangle here. And here is the cut half square triangles. I usually start on the right hand side, flipping it over. And it is important that you actually line the 45 square angle up with the 45 of the half square triangle below. If that's not straight, nothing else is going to be straight either. So keeping that straight, going off the end, then I'm going to grab another one just to make it faster. Chain piecing is what we call that. If you've never seen that happen before, we're going to chain piece. Then I'm going to cut my triangle off the back. There's my leader piece. And I'm going to just finger press this. So I'm just going to flip that triangle up and finger press that. And because it's got the spray sizing on it when we did the dunking, it's going to hold really, really nicely. Now I'm going to add the other triangle to it. So putting it in so that the corners are squared up. I'm going to start sewing here. And that means that this valley right here is a scant quarter of an inch. So as it's coming into my sewing machine with the needle down, it's right there in the valley. And then you'll, you kind of have some idea that, ah, oh, everything is working out the way it should. You know, there's sometimes when you're working on a quilt that all of a sudden something seems odd. Why, why is it doing it that time? You're probably doing something wrong. So stop, take stock of what you're doing and check it out one more time. If I run into where I'm all of a sudden there's not that quarter inch valley, I'd be going, all right, something's wrong. Something wasn't cut right to begin with. And then we're going to go off onto the leader and leave that there so it'll be ready for our next block. So now taking these to the ironing board, I'm gonna press those out. All right, so that is the first step of this modified block. And we've already done this step, like I mentioned in the previous block, but the next part is what is modified. So coming in with our fabrics now, I'm gonna move these over, I'll finish these off camera. Okay. We're going to take this large square and it's been cut six and seven eighths inches. Again, you cannot fudge that and say, I'm just gonna cut it seven and trim it down. Don't do it. You will not be happy with yourself. Take that square and now we're going to cut it twice. So twice on the diagonal and that will yield four triangles. So I like to just turn. Now I can get the other side. And now I have four triangles. Now in the world of quilting, these would be called setting triangles. And we're going to deal with those when we actually put the quilt together and it's on point setting. But you want to know that these inside edges are the bias edges. When the block is done, that won't be an issue. But just always knowing where your bias edges is an important thing. Now with the, those, we're going to take the remaining four two and seven eighths inch squares and on the back of those, you want to draw a diagonal line. So again, I've drawn with my white boheen. Now I'm going to line that up on that triangle. And I'm going to go piece it. Now in the case of this, up until now, I keep saying, you're drawing that line and sewing a quarter of an inch from that line. This time, no. I'm going to sew on that line. So let's go to our sewing machine. Now I'm going to adjust my needle 
to go back to center. Uh, let's lift that needle up. I'm going to move my needle to go back to center because now I'm going to sew on that line. Mm -hmm. So right down onto that line. And I kind of find it fun, just because I'm always looking for something else to be a little different, that instead of lining this triangle up the same way, spin it around. It kind of snuggles right into that triangle from before it. And we'll do a couple of more like that in an upcoming block. And then off on our leader. And there are four of these. I'm just doing two of them on camera. All right. So now take your pins out. Be very, very sad if you did the next step with your pins in there. We want to cut or trim a quarter of an inch away from that line. So again, you can do that with your rotary cutter. Here I'm going to place the quarter inch of the ruler right on that line. So I'm trimming that off. Other option would be to just take your scissors. It does not matter if it's an exact quarter of an inch, so either method will work. Now for this block, the pressing is very, very important. Two of these um, units, you're going to press toward the background. So my background in this particular quilt is the black. So depending on what your background is, you're going to press two of them toward the background. Two of them are going to be pressed toward the green. So if you flip the block up so the green is on top, because that one just feels odd. The other one feels perfectly normal. This one is going to feel a little odd. Okay. So now you can see that I have them pressed in opposite directions. Do two this way, two this way, and then we'll get back together to put the blocks, units completely together. So I have both parts of the unit done. And so these are just half square triangles for all intents and purpose. Now, if everything is gone according to plan, they should be pretty close to the same size. And when I tested it, I noticed that mine really wasn't. Look at how much bigger it is down here at the bottom. That's going to happen. You just keep moving forward. So to compensate for that, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that the long line is actually lined up. So let it be a little bit bigger on the outside edge. If we have to, we can trim that down, possibly. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But in this case, I'm going to line it up down here at the bottom. And I'm going to sew it from this side so that when I'm sewing, I will be looking for that little cross hatch right there. And that's why I use the lighter colored thread so you can see it. I'm going to be trying to shoot just to that little X, maybe a smidgen bit to the right. So I'm going to sew these together and come back and show you how it worked out, okay? So my little half square triangle or my new triangle units are actually pieced. And when you're pressing these, you want to press these to the point of least resistance. And I'm going to kind of do a little add on to that when it comes time to put these quadrants together. So flipping it up, pressing to the point of least resistance. You can see I did not cut off my little red point that I have. The little red point is just a little bit floating away and that's okay. I'd rather have a floating point than have my points be cut off. All right. Now at this point, one thing you can do is trim these down to four and a half inches. So let's kind of see how they're doing with that. So bringing in my mat, and this is a five inch Omni grid. Let's see what size these actually are. Lining up the diagonal. Yep, they're actually a smidge. This side is four and a half this way. This one is a little smidge short. So I'm just going to leave them as they are. And then we'll do some trimming at the very end. But now it's time to put the block together. And just on first glance, seems simple enough. Whoops. Okay, if I put them together the right way, it would seem simple enough. But you need to pay attention to the pressing solution. I talked about when we were putting the black square on the green that sometimes we pressed it toward the green. So this one is toward the green. And sometimes we pressed it toward the black. It's very important that you line them up so that they're um, kitty corner to each other, I guess. So these two, the bottom left and the top right, are pressed toward the green, this seam. And then the top left and the bottom right are pressed toward the black. So let me flip those over. 
And that's going to be very important to the way that this block goes together. So flipping this over, I can now see that I can butt that seam together. So if I open it up, I can see that the black and green are running right next to each other. And one seam is pressed one way, the other on the other direction, and then put a pin there to make sure it stays. But then this seam, there's just no fancy way to do it. You can't press this in opposite directions or else this would be super bulky right there in the middle and you never want to do that. So instead, we're gonna do what I call flipping the seam. On this one, they're both pressed to my left. I'm gonna just take with my fingers and push that down. So I am flipping that seam. So right here in the middle of this edge, I'm gonna flip that seam and I'm gonna do it to the same thing to the next one. Matching up where I already have it pressed in opposite directions, that was easy peasy. But this next one, line it up and then flip that seam make sure it's pulled out completely, and then pin that. And when we go to our sewing machine now, we're just going to be sewing that down, okay? So didn't need to pin the middle. The middle is the middle. You don't oftentimes need to pin that. But I do want to keep my pin as I'm going over this one. Keep that in there. I don't want it to fudge at all. And then same with this one. Just keep the pin right there and go slowly. Then we'll get this next block. And that flipping technique, that's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to try to avoid, I guess I should say. When possible, I want to be pressing to the point of least resistance, but it's not always possible. You'll also hear quilters say, always press to the dark side. That is rarely always possible. So just know that you're just going to be doing the very best you can with your pressing to get your block to be as flat as possible. Let's move this out of the way, take our pins out. So I'm going to start the pressing for this seam by pressing this little guy in the flipped position. So now he is flipped. So about halfway between that half square triangle, it just flips. It works. And then I can press this up. And I'm going to do them both exactly the same. So that's one. So now I'm going to take this one, same thing. Press that little flipped seam and press it up. So now when I take this and spin it around, you can see that my this seam is pressed up this seam is pressed down, and then I'll be able to butt this seam, this seam, and this seam, and then up here, I'll do that little flipping again. So starting in the middle, crash those two little seams right together so they're butt together. Pin it, because I want it to match. Press this one, now this one's the easy one because I had already chosen to press those in opposite directions. So they fit together quite nicely. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to flip that seam to get it to match. Then turn it over and flip this seam so that it'll always be in the same place on the block, which you'll see when I get this sewn and pressed. So let me take this to the sewing machine and I'll come back and we'll do the pressing. All right, so my center seam is sewn and I do wanna give it a pre-press before I open it up. And then I want to do the seam separating in the middle. Now, we talked about that in one of the previous um, episodes that I think was the clay choice when I show you in a larger half square triangle the how to do that, a pinwheel. So this, I'm going to do the same idea. So anytime four blocks come together, you can do the seam separating. So I just took those two stitches out. I did not cut them. I just released them so that now I can flip the seam in opposite directions, which makes it very flat on that little center. Now, I know that this block has these flip seams in it too, which is always gonna make some odd little bulky places, but whenever possible, just do your best to try to get the block as flat as possible. So he's looking pretty flat there. I do generally like to let him cool on the table, but we're just gonna keep going for now. Because I want to show you how you may be able to trim this block. So the blocks are supposed to measure at this point eight and a half inches. And from this side, it's a maybe just right or maybe a smidge bigger. And on this side, 
He's a little bit short. Let me see if I line him up there. Yeah, I'm not sure what I can do here either. So let me show you what I may do. When you trim a block like this that has points, you cannot square it up. You must trim it. And I mention it every time in the book that you may carefully trim, but what you want to be careful of is that you do not go past the from that point to the edge of the block must be that quarter inch or scant quarter of an inch. So I will take my ruler and I'll line that point up on the quarter of an inch of the ruler and see how much can I trim. There we go. I was able to trim that little dog ear off. Yeah, not a big deal whether or not I do that. Some people are obsessed with getting the dog ears off. Doesn't bother me. If it doesn't bother you, you don't have to deal with it. All right. And so this one is not super straight. He's a little bit crooked. But if I trimmed this any narrower, I would have lost that red point And I don't want to lose that red point. So just know that you may do a little bit of trimming, but you are not squaring up the blocks once they're like this. So one more side. And this mosaic 21.2 block will be done. So there's quite a few more blocks to go. I hope you're following along. If you're interested, the book is available on our website, onpoint-tv.com. All of my books and patterns are there, so be sure you take a look there. Also, my pin cushion and the cool little seam rippers and alls that Gina makes. So take a look there. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Now, I have learned that on an iPad, sometimes it's hard to find that notification bell. So keep that in mind. If you're just always watching on an iPad, you might need to log into a computer just so you can find where that notification bell is. Then you'll know whenever we're publishing a new video or if we go live. Have a great day.